My name again is Mia McNary, and I'm here to talk about how visuals are so powerful for recovery. And one of the things I have started to notice in 1995 was where are all the visual tools to help people stay clean and sober? I couldn't believe how there was all these different books out there, but there was very few visuals. And being a visual thinker, a learner, I really knew, I knew that I needed to have engaging and relevant images to um, hook the concepts into my brain, or I would keep on relapsing. And that was the case for my life. Um, I started these um, right at the beginning are just all these are images that have been drawn in real time while listening to people's stories. Um, and I know that everyone is coming from different points of view from um, different sects of the um, of the recover of the of addiction. But I just want you to remember that I feel that there's so much that could be researched on in the area of visuals because our brain loves visuals. We're visual people. And especially in crisis, people do not remember pie charts and long text things, but our brain needs is, it's easy for our brain to pull up visuals in a crisis. Um, just to show you what I'm talking about, about my visual process, here is an example of how I can, I create notes. Obviously this is done in, in fast time, but um, you can see how I have all the different pieces of images and, and copy are in little boxes. And those are the containers that I use to help myself understand how to listen properly to the content that's being delivered to me. And then I always put them in color because my brain loves color. Um, and also I always share these with people who are new in recovery and they love them. Um, what got me to where I am and it started in 1995 and I could not could not stay sober. I could not. I um, would read the stuff. I'd go to meetings. I'd listen to everybody, but I'd walk out the door and the information would go out one go out one ear and in the other. Um, and so I started realizing that if I ever wanted to know what I was capable of doing, I needed to try a different route. I couldn't find visuals, so I decided to start creating my own, like I just showed you. Um, and I, would, I was kind of embarrassed because I didn't want people to think that I was taking their inventory down on paper when I was in meetings and things. And so I really was very mindful of listening for the actual content that was being um, shared, the themes, because I really wanted to see what my power, what I was capable of doing and not having myself set back each time I have a, I didn't want to continue to watch people moving forward and I was moving backwards. So I decided to try a new tack and it worked for me and it has worked for other people. Why visuals are so important for recovery in my mind um, is that 65% of the population would say that they are visual learners. 30% um, auditory and 5% um, people who need to have motion, movement, things like that. So why is it that most of the materials that are um, recovery-based have very, very few visuals? And the visuals that are there are very archaic or very non-emotional content. Um, I'm sorry, I wanted to mention one of these images is um, a drawing that was done in like 20 seconds. And it was about keeping the lid on the drinking problem. It's like a little monster inside. And this was inspired by someone telling a story about how they couldn't keep a lid on their addiction problem and the shame and anxiety that they had. And that just the oscillating between like trying to fake it and then, but knowing that they needed to get help. 80% of what we see, we remember. So hopefully there's something in here that will help you remember uh, how important visuals are for when you leave here. 20% is what you read and 10% is what you hear. So obviously, because our brains are so love visuals, it's so important that we integrate visuals into helping people that are struggling. Visual content is much easier to recall and also process. By seeing things, you kind of remember like if this was like taking inventory and looking at what your target was for this year, some of the goals you might have of being humble or being gratitude or learning to have more clarity with a calm mind. These are the kind of things. Another thing is using, um, using images that help you um, see conveying a message of um of just the visuals that convey a message using a symbol, like a bottle, like in here, or icon of a person stuck, 
um, to represent concepts of um, the powerful vicious cycle of feeling like a failure after swearing off drugs and alcohol only to find themselves lying and using again. It's a great place to not uh, to start off to talk to people that are struggling and just to say that you know visuals can be life changing because it's easy to recall for long term storage and also to remind one not to go back there. Research shows that when people reflect on images, um, they they come they come up with a new understanding of the concepts and they re that relate to their journey. Our eyes are constantly looking for um, concepts to latch onto. We're much better at finding concepts in visuals than text. And that was from Traffin in 2014. All my research is at the bottom of all the, at, the, at the end of the files. We cannot without seeing it. We cannot remember it. Finding a new life in recovery. Research shows that uh, visual narrative scenes can transmit messages faster than audio, plus visuals go directly to our long-term memory and improve our comprehension and increase motivation in the user and the viewers by keeping them more engaged longer. And seeing your best self after cleaning up your past, it's like knowing that knowing um, kind of like he, Stephen Covey about having the end in mind of using our um, past mistakes and seeing that there will be a better, there'll be a reason for them. Um, and knowing that by going through the pain, you'll get to the other side by taking the inventory, you see the pattern of one's life. And then we notice how to kind of um, pay attention to personal shortcomings that can cause the, to, to lessen the amount of challenging moments in your life. The same goes for what color is your shield. Like you started off, at least I started off with the concept of um, being shameful of being in recovery or having these challenges to the point of where I have another shield and it's like a shield to protect me from just the you know possibility of urges or whatever that might be, but there's no shame left and I don't want to go back to having to be hiding behind that ever again. And these are, um, these are things about the different different stages of recovery, um, they must be celebrated, you know, from the time of walking into a recover, a rehab place or walking into a recovery room to like say that you can't do it anymore and you need help is a huge celebration um, to the point of going from dry to sober for someone who's been sober a while and like realizing a new release on your program. And the last is just like realizing to be yourself, to be 100% yourself, just like Andrew was talking about um, in the last presentation about what we can't handle and the discomfort of being born with um, that trauma and just how to release that. And that happens over using the tools of, of um, recovery. And, you know, spot it, you got it. Like I learned hearing that years ago and I loved it. And it's the idea of seeing what you can see at that time. And as you grow in your recovery time, um, lessen, you know, not having as many relapses or whatever, you start seeing who you are and how you don't want to go backwards. You want to go forwards. And you always have a choice. You have a choice every day. You have a choice to be transform transformal or um, sit in the corner, you know, and watch life go by. And so I feel like the idea of feeling um, for a long time, but then I've learned in recovery, I'm, but that doesn't mean that I'm less than, and it's none of anyone's business, what they're thinking about me. I just need to focus on doing the next right thing and be happy to see when life going in on the right, in the right direction and knowing what my superpowers are, you can pause when those intense urges use or conflict happens to show that I have new tools to make um, to make it this time. And so I have these little projects, like this would be like, draw your superpower. It's another project of like, you know, say goodbye to your old self, um, your drunk self and like, or your high place a person is to say goodbye and like unmask and it's uncomfortable, but drinking is not an option. And so each day gets better. And just knowing, hearing that from other people in the program was very helpful. But for me to visualize that, like that I'm taking some, like this mask off of like this, you know, altered ego to be able to be like, I'm going to just take one step at a time forward. And the, the steps, uh, working the steps or a program, whatever you choose that will work until it starts working you and discover the incredible um, wisdom you hear from others around you about learning how they've gone through some big challenges. Why am I here? A new awareness of the lost time was huge for me and the need to have, use a second chance 
to be the, to use it in the best way, showing up and being ready to share my experience, raising hope and opening and open and new doors will open. And this is why I'm, you know, using my art and sharing with others. Um, doing inventory harm. I had a hard time with this. I really did. I had a hard time is actually um, the, um, when I was going in and out, this was something that actually forced me to relapse. And it was because I didn't want to really look at the things, the harm that I did to others and myself it was very painful. Um, but as soon as I learned, learned that I had to go through that to get to the other side, kind of like what Andrew was just talking about, like realizing what is the root cause, I actually, in, in the fear of exposure, made me a limit, like not wanted to really look at stuff, which ended up causing more internal twisting for me than it needed to be. So as soon as I did that, I actually felt a huge new freeing moment. Um, still having to look back at ones, you know, at how our how my addiction affected others and reflecting on that, all those interactions and how they harm, not just for myself, but on with others. And I think it's really important not to beat ourselves up um, and be extreme and at this you know, looking at what we did and didn't do. So one of the, the examples would be for this is to like draw out some boxing gloves to remind yourself not to be so harsh on yourself. Um, you know, let go or be dragged and like drop the heavy baggage that we have in our life, forgive ourselves for our, all the past mistakes um, and put a name to those things, the people, places, things, because then when you see it in this doodle thing, you can kind of see how, was less scary, but also you can see how this extra baggage is really holding you back and not moving you forward. Um, and again, it's like, you can hear a lot of chatter in your head about not wanting to get help. This is on a, a, like a visual scene of like the ego blocks getting help for, for addiction. A lot of people have that. They're embarrassed of uh, what people will be saying. And really, again, it's none of your business, what people think. And you could have all the people in the world, but you just need to be focusing on, um, just bridging a gap to like the next step of getting better. Um, and looking at your character defects, that was a hard one too, is like really looking at the scary thoughts that pop up in my head. And those are the things that would cause me to relapse because I didn't want to look at it. And so when they would pop up, I wouldn't know how to handle them. Um, and so by looking at the root cause, it could find a way to changing behaviors. Um, and by cleaning up, you actually can do the, doing the opposite. Like if instead of being fearful, I could be faithful. Instead of being prideful, I could be humble. Taking a one character defect and give it a name like boastful Ben must be rejected out of the conversation with others by drawing it and putting phrases in a name. It, it becomes easier to spot when spot it, you got it type thing. Thanks. Um, okay. Daily review of having um, having to change behavior, like just keeping tabs on how you're responding versus reacting to different things in your life, and is progress not perfection? Um, and then knowing that you're covered, you have protection. A lot of times, people in recovery have are in um, relapsing is because they feel out of control, or they feel that they are so raw they can't handle what's in front of them. But the key for a recovery process is to know that you are covered. You can call it a higher power. You can call it anything but you. But that where you find uh, peace and calm. That's what I usually say for people to draw that. Um, and then trying to find balance is tough. Like, you know, you can maybe find more balance, let's say you're in, in rehab, but then once you get into the real world, there's a lot of things that can set you off balance. And so it's important to know who are the people, places, and things that can make you feel off balance. Um, it's important to know what those are. So I tell people to visualize that and to remember the phrase of this too shall pass and don't quit before the miracle happens. We're not alone. There's a lot of connections by seeing the common experience. That was one thing I learned is like by listening in a, in a different way to take visual notes, I realized I was really listening for the themes and the themes that I would hear from people that I'd least expect it, that would be the most profound educator for me, taught me such a lesson that I need to be open to all. And then how to ask for help. It's okay to ask. And I know that's a really hard thing for a lot of people, especially me. Um, and, but it was by helping other people when I didn't feel like I was really ready to do that, but it was, I was out of hiding and I started to build an amazing life with others by doing service work. I was no longer embarrassed by the past and I was using it to a way to connect with newcomers. And I found that my, I uh, found that service was key. It was the only way for me to keep it was to give it away. And then we have a choice. It's not about, you can't do this, you can't do that. But it was like, I realized it was a suggestion of the program that I was in and, and that 
and that it's like, it, it's transformable. It, like my health, my wellness, my mental health, everything got better as I stopped using. And it was amazing to me how my life changed. A lot of times people saw it more in me than myself. Um, and it's just by doing simple act actions each day to make things better. So I see so you have a choice, either being miserable is an option, or you can have a more joy. Um, visual, a visual recovery tool is a spot, you guys, like looking at ways to spot when agitated, ask for help, like visualizing different ways to find peace and new connections. Um, enough is a funny word for people who are addicts. There is never enough in anything. And so addicts need to like think about when you did have enough, it, maybe you have to visualize the stop sign. Um, push to the edge. Who, who was it? What was it? What was the moment when you realized that you had to stop and find help when you were powerless? Who threw the lifesaver to you and dragged you in? Who was on the other side of that rope? Digging out of trouble. Is finding a shovel or do you need a backhoe to get you out of the trouble? And then like putting the phrases on the, the deep hole that you're in to like find out like what mess you created, but what you got out of as well. And uh, research shows that um, if you do any kind of doodling while you're listening to content, it can help to inspire and emo it evokes emotion, but also has a, a positive outcome for communication and recall because it shows that you can recall information 29% um, better than if you just listened. Alarm clock, oh my gosh, um, relapsing. It's like everything is bringing, like relapses are so high, they're 40 to 60%. And maybe that high re the high number might be because there's a limited um, visual content that's used. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know maybe all programs, but the ones that I have searched around. So visualizing an alarm clock to help people know that they um, need to pause when they're yep. agile. Yep. Uh, I'm sorry to interrupt you. You have three minutes left. We're kind of running late in the meeting. Yep. 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 So yep. Okay. Yeah. So I'm just Thank passing through these last ones um, about always remember that people have a, a, a safety net and to celebrate your um, hidden potential by being your best self and to face face to face with your truth makes courage. And that's what you find. That's when you find your true self. Thank you so much for letting me share about the joys of using visuals to help people in recovery. And my book that's just been published is Picture Recovery. It's a vision, a visual roadmap through the journey of recovery. And it goes over these things. But thank you so much for letting me share. I hope you guys all have a great day, evening.